Gentleman from Oregon seek recognition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1580, a bill to affirm the policy of the United States regarding Internet governance. The clerk will report the title of the bill. House Calendar Number 21, H.R. 1580, a bill to affirm the policy of the United States regarding Internet governance. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Walden, and the gentleman from Vermont, Mr. Welch, will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Oregon. I thank the chair, and I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and insert extraneous materials into the record on the bill. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentlemen, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of H.R. 1580, sometimes called the Internet Freedom Bill. The Internet is possibly the most important technological advancement since the printing press. Government's hands-off approach has enabled the Internet's rapid growth and made it a powerful engine of social and economic freedom. This bipartisan bill is designed to combat recent efforts by some in the international community to regulate the Internet, which could jeopardize not only its vibrancy, but also the benefits that it brings to the entire world. Nations from across the globe met at the December 2012 World Conference on International Telecommunications in Dubai. They considered changes to the international telecommunications regulations. The treaty negotiations were billed as a routine review of rules governing ordinary international telephone service. A number of countries, such as Russia and China and Iran, sought to use the negotiations, however, to pursue regulation of the Internet through the International Telecommunications Union, a United Nations agency. None other than Russian President Vladimir Putin has been clear in his objective of, and I quote, establishing international control over the Internet using the monitoring and supervisory capabilities of the International Telecommunications Union. Now, the developments in Dubai were not unanticipated. That's why leading up to the conference last year, the House and Senate unanimously passed Senate Concurrent Resolution 50. Now, that resolution expressed the sense of Congress that the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Commerce should advocate the consistent and unequivocal policy of the United States to promote a global Internet free from government control and preserve and advance the successful multi-stakeholder model that governs the Internet today. Now, under that multi-stakeholder model, non-regulatory institutions seek input from the public and private sectors to develop best practices for managing the content, applications, and networks that make up the Internet. The Internet is organized from the ground up and not from the government handed down. This is not to say that government has no role in policing unfair or unlawful, I should say, behavior. Illegal activity is no less illegal simply because someone has used digital tools to perpetrate the act. Child pornography, for example, is no less illegal if it's disseminated over the Internet rather than in photographs and magazines. There is a big difference, however, when punishing illegal acts committed uh, over the Internet and government control of its management and operation. Refraining from regulating the underpinnings of the Internet has allowed it to evolve quickly to meet the diverse needs of users around the world and to keep governmental or non-governmental actors from controlling the design of the network or the content it carries. Buttressed by the unanimous passage of Senate Concurrent Re Resolution 50, the United States and 54 other countries left Dubai without signing the treaty. Unfortunately, 89 nations did sign. The revised ITRs will be implemented by those nations, and that begins January of 2015. Now, a number of upcoming conferences will present additional opportunities for countries to pursue international regulation of the Internet, including the World Telecommunications ICT Policy Forum in Geneva, which starts today, and the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference in Busan, South Korea, in 2014. The growing threat of such regulation prompted the subcommittee of which I chair, the House Energy and Commerce Subcommittee on Communications and Technology, to hold a joint hearing earlier this year with the House Committee on Foreign Affairs. Just as international opponents of an unregulated Internet are redoubling their efforts, so must we. That's why the hearing we've held focused on draft legislation, elevating the language of last year's resolution from a mere sense of Congress aimed at a particular treaty negotiation to a generalized statement of U.S. law. I want to thank Foreign Affairs Chairman Ed Royce, Africa Global Health 
uh, Global Human Rights and International Organization Subcommittee Chairman Chris Smith, and Terrorism, Nonproliferation, and Trade Subcommittee Chairman Ted Poe for their leadership and their help in calling attention to this important legislation and the issue broadly. I also want to address the uh, elephant in the room, if you will, the FCC's network neutrality regulations. As the legislation we consider today was moving through the subcommittee and then the full committee, some of my colleagues expressed concern that transforming the exact language of last year's unanimous resolution into law would somehow interfere with the FCC's network neutrality rules. In particular, they saw a conflict with the language making it U.S. policy to, quote, promote a global Internet free from government control, close quote. Well, let me be clear. While I oppose the FCC rules re regulating the Internet, this legislation does not address those regulations. While statements of policy can help delineate the contours of statutory authority, they don't create statutorily mandated responsibilities. Nonetheless, in the interest of reaching bipartisan consensus and moving this important legislation forward, I agreed to drop the government control language. The result is the language you see today in H.R. 1580, which I introduced with Ranking Member Eshoo. This bill would make it U.S. policy to preserve and advance the successful multi-stakeholder model that governs the Internet. So passing H.R. 1580 will show we are united against efforts by authoritarian nations to exert their grip on the Internet. For the sake of the Internet and the social and economic freedoms that it brings, I urge my colleagues to vote for the bill, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman